Good morning, Karibu, back to Y254 TV. Thank you for still keeping it here. We are very glad that you are able to join us this morning. So I have a question to ask you. As a young person, what are you using your money for? What are you using the little coin here and there? Uh, you've made a kamarupu rupu, you've done a, bu a business or you other, you've been given money you didn't expect, or money that you even expected from your salary. What are you using that money to do? Are you financially literate? Do you know the investment? You could actually put that few cents into that could actually give you back way much more. That's the conversation we are having this morning with Arbanas Mothenya. Karibu sana Arbanas. Pleasure. Pleasure to meet Good you. to have you this morning. Thank you very much. So Arbanas, mm. tell us about yourself. My name is Arbanas mm -hmm. Mothenya. I'm an investor. <coughs> I've also been... Uh, working in the insurance sector for quite some time. And I've also been a teacher in financial management. So I understand this very much. Ah. Yes. So why did you choose that field of all the fields? Yeah, I chose that field because of my educational background. So I ended being in love with finance and finances. And you know, you cannot love money and you don't represent money. <laughs> So, so we, 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 we watch out to, for two. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so, it's a place uh, to watch. What, what can we, what can we, um, I'm looking at where do I start this money conversation? So, what work is scared to raise a pesa? What can you scared to raise a pesa? Because <laughs> in church, when you hear about money, you, you think your pastor wants it. Yes. Outside, when you hear you an insurance person, me, because I can you scared to raise our two insurance, you are always thinking, wana kuja kunikon. No. Th that's a myth. That's a myth. That's a myth and misconception. Mm. But I will clear the air out. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> glad, I'm glad. So let's start from, why do you think that, what do you think we need to first know when it comes to money, before we even start talking about the investment? Yeah, money and investments are two different things. Mm -hmm. But now you've asked that what we need to know when we think about money. Mm -hmm. We need to know that you can get money from working, Mm -hmm. or you can get money from doing business mm -hmm. or you can get money from inheritance or you can borrow the money from the banks mm -hmm. or maybe financial institutions mm -hmm. which are different maybe a bank maybe a circle maybe an insurance firm so money is versatile mm -hmm. and maybe you can sell your property mm -hmm. you can sell your land you can sell your car you can sell your phone so money is faster. You can be given money by your parents. Mm -hmm. You can have money as an inheritance. Mm -hmm. So money is versatile. What's the first thing that comes to your mind, rather to your plan? Now, as, as, a, as a financially literate person, or rather as a financial consultant, once I give you money, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Uh, the 100K, pap, ni mekupea. This is a secret of money, uh -huh. even for all investors. Mm -hmm. Even before we go to the school of thought, how the book says about money, mm -hmm. but in a layman's language, as a business person, you need money as capital. Mm -hmm. What do I mean? I mean, you need money to finance your small, not expenditures. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can finance expenditures, but you need to small, you need to finance your small or maybe big needs of business. You want a client, or like for example, a client comes to me and says, I want you to help me on this and this. I tell the client, fine, let's say in the contract, this is how much you are paying. I can spend my money, I do that deal, mm. I get the money. You understand? Mm. So you can use money to do the business and then you claim. Instead of going to borrow money, because that money you borrow is attached with some interest, mm. which is very painful at some time. Mm. It's just like buying a car on loan and then you start a Uber. Mm. You'll be doing zero work because you'll be buying two cars in the event. I'm not saying people should not do that. Ah. Amazing. So, what's the difference between insurance, um, money markets, mm -hmm. investments? Mm -hmm. Because personally, as a person, now even before we talk about other people, I, I, I'm not sure I'm able to distinguish be between insurance and mm. money markets. So, what's the, what's the difference between insurance, money markets? Very and good. These are very different things. You know, an insurance is like a contract mm -hmm. or maybe a policy whereby you wish to protect your risks. Mm -hmm. And that's why we call it a contract because it's between parties. 
there is an insurer and there is insurer. Mm -hmm. Someone who is taking your risks. This is the company which comes in and says, I will take grace risk. Just in case whatever grace is fearing happens, maybe some fire, I will be there to stand for grace. Mm -hmm. But now there is a contract per se because there's an agreement between two parties whereby there is offer and agreement. You know, an a contract is offer plus agreement and then it becomes a contract. Mm -hmm. So these two parties agree, grace, in case this happens, I come and pay. But for me to do that, you pay me some premiums. You, pay, you have to bear some cost. Because you play your part, I play my part. My part is to stand on you in case something happens. Mm. And still again, we are good Christian people. Sometimes we have to tell God what we are fearing. It may not happen. So the insurance company mm. is just there keeping your premiums. So, good, quest, good, good but, point. There's, uh -huh. But your question was very long. <laughs> you also went and spoke about Mo Ma Money MMF. Market. Before we get to money market, mm. to back for insurance. Mm. what happens, because you've raised something, a very valid point. So what happens when, I've always wondered, mm. what happens? Nimekuwa nikilipa medical cover for a whole year. I've not gotten sick, assuming that I have been paying. Where does that money go to? Now, that is why I will take you later mm -hmm. to what we call mutual funds whereby we shall speak about the MMF because mutual fund mm -hmm. is a collection of items whereby MMF is one of them. Okay. So you will agree with me that mm -hmm. you as a good godly person like you are, mm -hmm. there is no way you will wish that you had an accident or you had a sickness. Mm -hmm. okay. So you thank God for that. <laughs> So what are the different types of insurance policies that are there? There are so many different types of insurance policies. Because I don't want <coughs> to mix the story. You know, the first question was about what is insurance. <coughs> and then it was like, it was part A and part B. You mm -hmm. also spoke about money, market. market. And then question two, you spoke about money. So I don't know whether we have exhausted. So we, we began, I think we can, we can do recap. We yes, come yes. with what is money. What is money? What do you do when you get money? Yes. Then I asked you, because now, I, when you, the conversation when, where we started that, what is money? Yes. What do you do when you get money? Yes. And now, what is the difference between insurance and yes. money market? And money market. So we are at insurance. And I have not yet answered <laughs> what money, is money, money market. market. So we will get to money market. Okay. Let's talk about insurance. Okay, so... And insurance, as I have said, is a contract between two parties. A willing party wants to insure against your mm -hmm. risk, whereby you say, me as Grace, I want to insure, or I want to take care of, I want someone to take care of uh, my risks, mm -hmm. or my fears, mm -hmm. or my worries, just in case they happen. For example, every car is supposed to have an insurance, and this particular car is insured against theft, insured against mm -hmm. accidents, and so on. So this means that in case the car gets fire, in case the car gets in a accident, maybe it has been stolen, the insurance company comes and says, I'll pay Grace mm -hmm. the value which she insured. Because maybe the car is worth 10 million, and then you insured only 2 million. Will I pay you 10 million? Oh, okay. So you paid back the value which you insured? Yes. I only pay you what you decide there to insure. Because some people who are not very good are trying to be open. Because in insurance it says you have to be very open. Mm -hmm. You know, we are speaking layman's yes, language. Yes, yes. Let's not go to the jungle of insurance. Mm -hmm. We need to know that Grace has given us all the information about this. Okay. Because if you had some information, you'd be like, now the car was worth 10 million. And then the car has already got an accident. And then you want to be compensated. Nobody will pay you 10 million. Mm -hmm. They only pay you, or we only pay you the little you put to us and the premiums you've been paying. Maybe okay. you've been paying 10,000 towards an insurance of 2 million shillings. So you've raised the word premium. What's a premium? A premium are small payments. They can be monthly. You can also choose them to be quarterly. You can also choose them to be every other six months or maybe yearly according to your income mm -hmm. or cash flow. That is a payment directed towards the insured, insured amount. That insured amount is like the way I've given you an example of two million shillings, and then now you start paying towards that. Ah. And that one you can pay as long as you live. No. It does not mean that you will stop somewhere. 
Okay. Because the car has grown or no, 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 just keep on insuring the car and keep on paying your premiums. Okay. But in case an accident occurs, we only pay you what? The amount insured. All right. So what, what are the different policies? Uh, we have different policies, especially uh, towards to what you insure, because you can insure. You, maybe the question should be like, what can I insure? Because you can end up insuring your car, mm -hmm. you can insure your house, you can, there's also what we call life insurance, mm -hmm. or maybe you insure your children against sickness, you insure yourself against sickness, you can also take a policy towards the education plan. You know, education has become very expensive in Kenya. Yes. And many people have not gone to school not because they are not bright, but just because of lack of funds. Mm -hmm. So you as a parent, you as a mother, you as a father, you need to think deep and say, my children will not end up where I ended. I mm. take a very stern warning to myself. I say, no, these kids must go to university. These kids must go to the next level. These kids must get what they want. Okay. We are there to help you. We need to show you that there is what we call a plan towards the education of yourself, the education of your children, the education of someone else and it's very co it's very seamless actually you don't even feel the pain we we structure it towards your needs or towards your income we don't structure it towards big rich oh no 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 we tell you this is your income fine we want this much and so, this is how much you get once mm -hmm. your child gets so who benefits from the insurance is it the insurer insurance company or me as the person who's seeking insurance uh that has been I mean, some people think that the insurance company benefits. Uh -huh. And for sure, insurance firms are very rich. So <laughs> <laughs> it's one place you need to know that they will never be poor. They will keep on being rich. Mm -hmm. And they, they, there is no way an insurance firm can be rich and the people are working there not be rich. Mm -hmm. What I mean is this. The person who benefits is the person who has insured their risk. Because just imagine, there was some fire at Kikomba. If those people were insured against their stocks, against their goods, against their shops, who will benefit? Is it the insurance firm? <laughs> Somebody probably lost an investment worth 50 million. Mm -hmm. And probably they had taken a loan. The loan will not stop because there was fire. Mm -hmm. So now, with that particular reasoning, you will know who benefits. Okay. Because it's not all insured things or insured risks which occur. Sometimes the risk may not occur. Mm -hmm. But 99% if the risk occurs, even though the fire extinguisher has not come, mm -hmm. the risk can occur. It, maybe it was fire insured. You are the one to benefit. Or maybe you have taken a plan towards your kids mm -hmm. and your kid is now in the university level. And somebody else never took that particular policy or that particular plan. Mm -hmm you are at a better place. Reason being, this kid of yours will keep on going to school. And by the time this kid of my friend who has not taken that pol plan or policy is trying to maneuver, work and get some money so that they can go to school, my kid has already graduated and they are working and they are giving me money. At a very small pain of maybe 2,000, maybe 5,000 per month, very small pain. Mm -hmm. Because a kid takes so many years to grow. So why are you stressing yourself at paying so much money from your own income, probably which is small, you need to structure it towards your income level, your oh. cash flow level. Okay. So you are the one to benefit, 99%. So other than the myth that it is the insurance company that's benefiting, what are the myths around insurance? Uh, there are a lot of myths. You know, some people, for example, here in Kenya, let's be realistic and let us come back home. Mm -hmm. Kenyan people, Grace being one of them, he sees insurance people like, oh, these guys. Ah. <laughs> May I see them by the eye. I don't like them. I see them. These guys. Rest. No, that is somebody else who cowed you because they try to tell you these people are wasting your time. I'm telling you, my friend, take this to the bank. These people are not wasting your time. They are, even you should pay them so that you can listen <laughs> to them. These are the great investment people. And that one you'll be told when you go back to maybe China or those developed countries. Mm -hmm. You know, Kenya, we have not been that much exposed, like the third, uh, the, the, like America, mm, third world countries. Third world yeah. countries. 
we have China, those big, big countries, they are so much exposed to, they have seen these things. So there is no way you can be listening to a fallacy, which was not written anywhere. Where did you read that insurance people are coming to call you? Tell me which book is that? <laughs> Who told you? How educated are they? How qualified are they to tell you and you believe them? You can't be believing in every term, in every term Dick and Harry. And verified information cannot substantiate to be information. That is just data. And it is okay. fake. So don't listen to those people anymore. Why? I warn you, an insurance policy you are going to take, it's going to benefit you big time. Okay. I'm, I'm even challenging you. <laughs> Please, if you don't have an insurance policy, you are surviving by the masses and the grace of God. And that's why God is so big in Kenya, to the extent that he will let you not suffer those risks. Mm -hmm. But people where they don't have so much of God, they know what is a risk. Okay. And that's why I tell you, maybe you don't know what is a risk. So at what stage should we start insuring? Because now, yeah. should we start seeking insurance services? Or rather, should we start saying that? Because I think we have been brought up in, in, an, in a way that ni mefika a certain age and I'm like, hey, bado mimi ni children. Bado ni koko wazazi wangu. You know, someone is at maybe in the university or they've just started working and they're still thinking that they will take insurance that when they become older. Maybe insurance will be, will be my thing when I am 35, when I am 40. So at what age, will sh what age is appropriate to start taking insurance? I'm telling you the earliest the better. The earliest, the better. But the information is so maybe young and small in Kenya that no people know why they should do that. And very few people know the, the reason why and why you should take an insurance policy. So the age is the earliest, the better. For example, you are 18 years old or you are 21 years old and you have a kid and you take a, poly a plan for your kid. And that plan is so seamless, you're only paying 1,000 shillings. Probably that 1,000, you got it from somebody who gives you a tip. Mm -hmm. And let's say that your job is like you are in the hotel and you are a waiter. You get some tip, 1,000 shillings. That one tip, you pay to your kid's policy. Come that five years old, your kid is 15 years or maybe 16 or 14. They are doing your, they are maybe class 8 or they are towards your there for one. That mother will be so happy. They just go come, we give you what we promised, mm -hmm. and we give you, and you smile your way to the school, and you smile your way to the bank, you smile your way, even that money you can use to invest, probably. You know, some people think that when I give you that plan, or that policy for your kid, mm -hmm. or this MMF, you are not just the only one benefiting. We insurance people, we not only give you that policy, or that plan, and get your premiums, but we also advise you, the reasons behind what you're doing. For example, you have taken a policy towards your kid. And this kid goes all the way to the university and then they get the money. The moment you get this money, you might find that it is not as costly as the money you have gotten. What does that mean? You invest part of that money. Do other businesses. Mm. You get two million shillings. And the, the, the university in Kenya to do a degree is... I think I paid like 500,000 shillings. Even a master's, you are paying like 500,000 shillings. And you have already been given five, 2 million. Mm -hmm. Go and pay the old school fees and use this 1.5 to do your business. You understand? Yes. And that one you cannot be told anywhere else. Even the banks cannot tell you because they want to lend you money at an interest. All right. Mm. So how does, how does um, the terms of engagement change? Assuming that... I have taken insurance for myself right now. I'm not married. So assuming that I have taken insurance for myself and then now I get into the place of marriage, do the terms of engagement change in terms of insurance? No, but we have a clause. You know, mm -hmm. once you are getting an insurance, mm -hmm. there is a booklet we give you, okay. what we call terms and conditions. Okay. And that is like when you are signing a contract. And any place you are exchanging any shilling, any money, to the extent of more than 200 shilling, shillings, mm -hmm. you must sign something, you must sign a contract. Okay. What we tell you there, we tell you what is this, why is this, what are the benefits of this, who can benefit, who is your next of kin, uh, who else can benefit, you understand? Yes. So according to that particular explanation, we structure it maybe what we call a cast on stone, okay. 
but sometimes you can tell us what you need and we structure yours to your needs. Okay. All right. To reflect exactly what you want. Have I answered your question? Yes. Yes, Thank you have. So, in the event that I am taking, for example, that's a conversation I was hearing the other day, mm. uh, people are conversing. I'm taking insurance, health insurance. For myself, I'm not married, but I have a significant other we are in a relationship in. Is it possible to take insurance for that person? 100% yes. Okay. And that's why I'm telling you, Grace, you're not married, very soon you're going to get married. And very soon you're going to have a lot of kids, or maybe a kid. I tell you, assuming that now you have gotten a kid and you're in the hospital and you're expectant and you want to give birth, and you have, not, you have just insured yourself, and maybe your insurance is not covering everything, that other friend of yours, who was your fiancé, you have also insured. You can pull together, and that's why sometimes even insurance firms insure themselves. Again, these risks they have. You find, if insurance was bad, we insurance companies <coughs> could, not in, sorry, could not insure ourselves. 99% of every insurance company here, or in the world, they must insure themselves. Meaning, you must pool resources together. And that is the answer to your question. You asked about pooling resources together, which is valid and a yes. Ah, amazing. So b before we move to the money market side now, mm. let me ask you a last question on insurance. How do you make the concept of insurance relatable to young people? Very good question. And exactly that, exactly that is why I came here. Why? Because our fathers and our mothers never taught us about insurance and they had all the wrong ideas about insurance. Or maybe when they were growing, that was not very fully grown in Kenya. And us being a, a very small country in the whole world, we may not have all that information. So take this to the bank. This young girl by the name Grace, this young boy by the name ABC, should learn and go and seek more information about insurance because you need this and not only you need this also your kids will need this so the earlier the better what i mean is this the youth should not just put uh, i mean all their monies to the stomach you don't just eat everything you get you know it's like you are paid a salary of one bob or maybe a salary of this amount of money and then you eat all the money you need to have a plan of your life and say, I get 100 shillings, I take maybe, I take, not maybe, I take 10% to God. That is cast on stone. Mm -hmm. I say, I take 20% to expenses. I say, now I also need another 30% for my own life. The balance, invest. Okay. Invest. And I'm telling you, the best way to invest is an insurance. Put it in the insurance sector. Because we insurance people, we not only insure against risk, but we have plans and ideas on how to do those things you think banks are doing. You know a bank is in business. But an insurance firm is here to help you. So you as a young person, don't eat all your money, please. Think about putting your money for the future of your kids because one day you'll be married. Put your money for the future of your education. Think about insurance, think about investment, think about mutual funds, mm -hmm. think about equity funds, think about uh, MMF, think about a uh, debt fund, think about uh, maybe any other type of investment. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, we insurance firms, we are full of that. Because it's an idea we have brought from the West and package it the way it is, we brought it to Kenya to suit all the people. And I tell you, the young people should be the people to embrace it. So that the old who never knew what an insurance is, they will start knowing. Because I think 99% of most of the old people, they only know insuring their cars, insuring against fire. What? Because that was not very much taught in Kenya. Okay. Mm. So we move to the money market side. What is money market? Very good. Now let's go to the money market. Uh, I said there is something known as a mutual fund. <laughs> Your question is, what is money market? But money market cannot exist on its own. It is 
one of the four items of a mutual fund. You know, a mutual fund is like an investment whereby you put your money and maybe you are putting money probably to an insurance firm like us or maybe to a, any firm which deals with uh, mutual funds. And that firm which deals with mutual funds collects money from A, B, C, D. When they put all that money together in a pool, they say now this money can be very good to help people who have needs, who have various types of investment plans. So it's like a pool of money, mutual fund, mutual fund. They bring money together. Mm -hmm. Now, that mutual fund, there are different types. MMF is one of the types. Equity is another one. Debt fund is another one. But mm -hmm. now let us stick to mutual fund. Okay. Mutual fund mm -hmm. is a type of investment whereby it is riskless and you use very small money to start. Now we are speaking layman. When you think of mutual fund, think about investment, which is very riskless, which is very seamless and very flexible and you are using very small money even to start. It, it welcomes even people who are earning a salary of 10,000 shillings. Ah. Yes, it will welcome you even if you are earning maybe pocket money from your parents. So this is basically a place where you put, you invest money? Yes, you invest money. We call it cash and cash equivalent. Okay. That is in the language of uh, investment. We call it cash and cash equivalents. You invest cash and cash equivalent. Cash is liquid or solid cash. Cash equivalent mm -hmm. is something which can be turned into money within 24 hours. Okay. So how little is little to start? Ah, ha, ha. That's a very good question. You can start with even... I've told you somebody who is earning 10,000 shillings per mm -hmm. month can start that. So mm. I think I've already answered the question indirectly. In, in so you can start with as low as below 10,000? And you can agree with me, very few people are earning below 10,000. Very few people. But they can also start that. Oh, okay. So this is an investment that is also viable for students in both universities. Students. That's why I spoke about even the pocket money. Oh, okay. Yes. So what's the importance of money market? The importance is because the biggest importance, it is riskless. You put your money there, you have to get a return. Okay. What is a return? It's like, uh, in a layman, it's like you get some we may not call it a profit, but you get something known as a benefit. Mm. That is what we call a return. You put, because the aim of investing is getting a return. So once you put your money there, you get a return. But your question was, what are the benefits? Mm. Benefit number one is there is a return. Okay. Benefit number two, it is riskless. So in assuming I have put in my 5,000 there, I am not losing my 5,000. Yes, you are If I want losing. my 5,000 back. You will get it even within 24 hours. Okay. And that is the sweetness about this mutual fund. So how do I monitor how, um, because someone is out here watching mm. and they may be interested in uh, one or two of those things, young people learn investment. So maybe someone is asking, as I also ask, how do you track your profits? That's a very good question. Uh, we have a lot of ways on how you can track your mm -hmm. profit. And that profit is determined by the amount of money you've invested. Okay. For tracking your profit will give you a training or maybe what we call an introduction per se to what we call MMF. Mm -hmm. And we open your mind. This mind is so big. It's only that you are thinking that you can understand. But when I stretch your mind, you will think like that European child who is outside there and they know this thing. So when you come to us, because of time here, mm. we shall give you what we call the nitty gritties, the A to Z, okay. the ABC about this thing as a package. I'm being told that our time is up and uh, as we try to sail this, this, this ship or rather as we try to land this uh, plane, what are some of the technologies that have 
improved the financial sector. Very good. And I understand that everybody has a phone. Technology is the key to investing. Mm -hmm. Because, as I have said, everybody in Kenya or Mombe, maybe in Nairobi has a phone. That smartphone you have is going to help you in investment. Because if you can repeat your question, you will find that you are touching more of technology and technology in regards to investment. Okay. You, you understand? Mm. So technology is everywhere, even in farming, even in hospital. So there is no way we can be investing and we don't use technology. This phone of yours is tool number one to answer your question that technology is is the way forward, is the future about investment. Because some of these things, you'll just be keying a, a USSD code, like star one, two, three, ash. You start your investment, we give you a policy. But now, the phone may not explain to you very much. So you need to come to your, or you select your engine, you select your advisor. They tell you, this is what you need to do, and this is what you do, as much as you understand, you can explain to somebody else. So you get what we call, a glimpse view of what you want to get into and you see the benefits because 75 percent of this thing called investment is benefiting mm -hmm. the person who gets into it 75 percent all right so finally mm -hmm. uh, so that we pave way for the next conversation yes what advice would you give what financial advice will you give a young person uh my parting shot is this you as a young man, you as a young lady there, you are thinking that I'm waiting when I will be that six to invest. You are thinking that there is a specific age or specific income or specific knowledge which you don't, need, which you don't have for you to invest. You are very long. You need to start now. Expose yourself to these things. They are on the internet, they are on TikTok, they are everywhere, they are on Facebook, everywhere. Or if you cannot find them, maybe you are so busy, spare your two minutes. Visit us. Visit, visit an insurance firm. And my brother, my sister, you will come there a very changed person. And you will not be changing your current because this is futuristic. Everybody should know that. You are changing your future. Amazing. So you want to tell us where we can find you? In case yes. someone wants more of your advice? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm very much available. Uh, viewers, Ladies and gentlemen, I respect you for your time. I thank you very much. May God bless you for this more information and for maybe any other question you may have, you can reach me on these numbers. I have several numbers, but there are some which are on my mind, like 0723-851-530. But now the other one, I have to check. Okay, it's fine. No worries. <laughs> it's okay. Thank yeah. you so much, Arbanas. We yeah. have had a great time yes. having a conversation with you. You have social media handles we can follow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you can follow me on TikTok. You can follow me on Facebook. You can follow me on Instagram. And my Instagram uh, handle is Armstrong. Okay. Just Armstrong. Okay. But now without, without a R. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much mm. for your time. Thank you for the financial nuggets that we need to hear as young people. I think a lot of times we get our money and we eat. We are not thinking of how to multiply the money, but thank you. We appreciate you. That was, uh, that was Arbanas Muthanya, a financial consultant, talking to us about how you can spend your money as a young person. Put it in insurance, put it in money market, put it in investment. The little you think is very little. It can be as little as a thousand bob or 2K, 3K. Don't think about it as millions. Think about it as the small money you have at your disposal and put it into good use. That was it from Empowerment Cafe. My name is Chris Maingi. Do not touch that. Dell, Val is coming back with more.